Hello and welcome. Recently, I released my own line of repairable do-it-yourself e-reader cases for a wide range of popular e-readers. And today, I wanted to share with you why I made these cases and the process for how I designed them the way they are. So let's first talk about why I decided to go and make my own repairable e-reader case in the first place. Well, over the last few years, I started to notice that whether it be a phone case, a tablet case, or even an e-reader case, the cases for the devices that I own do not last as long as I feel that they should or can. And this was especially true, not just for my e-reader, but also my wife's. Around the six month mark after owning our e-readers, both of our cases started to develop cracks and started to disintegrate. We tried to look into third party alternatives at the time, but there was none for such a niche e-reader that we had. And for an exact replacement from the manufacturer, we were going to have to pay out of pocket $50. $50 for a case that will start to self-destruct did not sound like a good investment to me. At the price, I might as well 3D print my own case. And that got me thinking, why couldn't I 3D print a new case for both myself and my wife? I brought the idea up to her, and as we both lamented and wished that there was such a thing as a repairable e-reader case, we broke into an argument. The argument that ensued proved that the idea, while good on paper, was going to be extremely difficult to implement. You see, a 3D printed part becomes oddly bendable and easily breakable the thinner it is. So if I was to make a case that wouldn't break, it would need to be thick and chunky like this mock-up that I made when my wife's last e-reader's case broke. However, my wife correctly pointed out that a case that thick would be both unwieldy, unusable, and undesirable. If I was to go and make a case for her, it would need to be as easy to use as our existing ones. So as we argued, we ironed out the specific details of what a 3D printable case needed to be in order for it to work. It was decided that the case needed to function like our existing e-reader cases. So no tools required for the e-reader to go in and out of the case. Our cases also needed to be as thin and as light as possible with as little bulk added to the design when possible. And finally, the printed components needed to be replaceable so that when one part of it would inevitably break because we're making this thin, it could easily be taken out and a new part be swapped in. With these guidelines solidly ironed out, at the time, I thought the idea was impossible. But with this being my only alternative, making my own e-reader case seemed like a better option. So I got to work making out what a repairable case would look like, which led me to my first prototype. The idea behind this case is quite simple. A platform with mounting points and removable arms that would go and hold your e-reader in. And if these arms ever were to break because they are quite thin, you can just pop your e-reader out and simply unscrew the arms and put in new ones. For my liking, there was a little too much in terms of issues with this first prototype. The arms were a little too flexible around the corners. And when you did put an e-reader case in, it was a little sharp and the e-reader didn't necessarily sit flush and moved around a little too much. But the design was good enough that it earned my wife's approval. 
and we started excitedly planning out the next prototype. And heck, we even reused this prototype to see whether or not we could adhere leather to the plastic with glue, since, well, that's how you bind leather to book covers. With the first prototype completed, I worked on the next, fixing the bits on the plastic which didn't feel right, while my wife worked on a better leather design and materials to glue onto the plastic. Originally, we were planning on reusing the original cover that came with our e-readers. But as we were designing this, we started brainstorming features that were missing or lacking in our existing cases, like a better place to put the stylus, and wouldn't it be cool if it was in the spine? So instead of completing our half measure and ripping apart an e-reader case, we decided to go all out and make a full back to front leather case. And we even added in some straps on the spine so that we can slot in a pencil. Alex even went in and tested out some iron on vinyl decals to give the case a lovely finish. I am in love with the results. The only issue with this design was the fact that we didn't know how or where we were going to be able to put in the sleep magnets. So what we ended up doing was taking apart Alex's existing e-reader case, salvaging the magnets from it, and taping them down onto the existing cover. It was at this point I fell absolutely in love with this design and wanted one of my own. It was after this we made prototype after prototype, making new revisions with purse class to save on cost, and going in and embedding the magnets into the covers so that uh, the sleep functionality would work. The designs were rough and the arms broke almost every week, but we made a lot of small changes which eventually led to our first alpha e-reader cases. We decorated them originally with iron on vinyl and we were so happy that we thought, hey, why, why are we the only ones who get to enjoy these cases? Why couldn't we sell them to everyone? Sure, at the end of the day, this would cost a lot more than a regular e-reader case, but the fact that this is repairable and the price for new arms would be leagues cheaper than an entire e-reader case that I feel that it would be a better value over a longer period of time. I was so excited with this concept that I even went out and bought Kobo and Kindle e-readers to start prototyping out cases for them. And I was just so excited to see whether or not I could shrink my design down so that it could work with a smaller e-reader and maybe even making it so that the platform would be cross device. A one size fits all e-reader where the only major differences would be the arms that you screw in and the location of the magnet. But what we didn't predict was the disaster which would occur back to back. The first was that the iron on vinyls that we were using to decorate our cases fell off within weeks, causing us to search for newer and better ways to decorate our e-readers per the assistance of my wife. We eventually settled on using leather paint. But the second issue that occurred immediately after this case was made almost killed the entire project. You see, up to this point, we have been using leather glue to adhere the leather to the plastic, just like you would with book binding. And up to this point, we had no issues. But if you were to look very closely on the edges, we did notice some bubbles that would appear in the leather. We originally thought that this was just a natural cause of the leather being folded over and this was just how it glued in place. But after I finished cutting and painting my, our latest six inch test case and Alex glued the whole thing together, it completely 
fell apart. And after a lot of small scale tests to see whether or not we could get leather to properly and permanently adhere to the PLA plastic that we were using at the time, it appeared that it wasn't so. The leather glue that we were using was really good at adhering leather to itself, but this plastic, not so much. Now, much earlier in the project, I had mentioned that we shouldn't be using glue as it would make the cases less repairable. However, after another argument, it was agreed upon at the time that the time commitment and difficulty of potentially stitching an e-reader case would be so cost prohibitive and tedious that it wasn't worth investing in. But now that gluing was no longer an option for us, we had to change plans and I had to learn how to sew. This led to our first major redesign. And after a bit more testing, we eventually ended up with this, our first sewn case. The case itself was slightly too small, but it was a perfect proof of concept and it worked shockingly well. And on Christmas day, it my wife and I sat together and we made our first beta e-reader cases. These cases have been our primary e-reader cases for about a year now and are the biggest reasons why I have such a high faith in my designs. I made so many little tiny changes from the shape of the arms to adding in just little tiny stress relief points that prevent the arms from bracing, which cut these arms lasting from just a little over a week to a month to over a year with the current set that are in this e-reader. With the designs finalized, it was time to optimize and fix all of our other production issues that we had. Up to this point, we had been using a cutting machine to cut our leather, but the machine would frequently jam and even after buying a new and sharper blades. This all came to a head when I was making my grandmother an e-reader case to test. It took the cutting machine over six attempts to cut one cover, and after wasting so much material, I was fed up and had to find a better solution. I eventually settled on moving to a laser cutter, which was not only a more precise, but also accurate and reliable way to cut the leather, even if the smell of burning leather was not pleasant. Another quality issue came about due to my now banana e-reader case. Once upon a time, this used to be an e-reader case for the Koonia, but turned into two completely inadvertent experiment cases, which completely turned it into this ruined state. The first was accidental, when I placed this case in the same bag as a wet towel after a swim. The water from the towel leached into the leather and it ballooned as it absorbed the water. And when it eventually dried out, it turned into this wrinkly mess. The result of that experiment was what created this little warning slip that we add into every order to make sure that the customer knows that this is not a waterproof e-reader case. The second issue came about while trying to dry our e-reader cases. As the leather was still wet, I thought, hey, why couldn't I just leave the e-reader case out in the direct sunlight to dry faster? So I did. And when I grabbed the e-reader case at the end of the day, the plastic was so warped that I couldn't even put the e-reader back into the case. And thus, the banana case was born and is completely un usable. We did contemplate switching over to using a more heat resistant material, but we assumed that the um, owner of an e-reader would be careful with a device that's primarily meant to be used indoors and wouldn't just leave it out on a balcony or in the car in an Arizona heat. That was until we ran across an issue where 
a customer received an order from us that completely melted in shipping. It looked fine, but was so undersized that they couldn't use it anymore. As a result, we revised the plastics for all of our larger prints from PLA that we typically use in our styluses and our display stands to the more heat resistant PETG that we use in our controller spools and now e-reader cases. But after all these years of designing, testing, making changes and more testing, what once started out as a project to make my knife a new e-reader case turned into a fully repairable case that can be purchased by anyone. I'm still making a lot of little tweaks and changes to optimize both how this case is repairable and its overall production. And thanks to their universal design, I've been able to support e-readers both new and old and continue supporting them even after the manufacturer stops. So thank you for watching this video and allowing me to ramble about one of my greatest design achievements to date. If you haven't already checked them out yet, please do at 16bitstore.com to see if your e-reader is compatible with one of our cases. If you order one, I do hope you enjoy it, as I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have yourself a good day, and as always, take care.